my name is Ben, and I am uh, originally from North Carolina. So, tell us a little about your business. Well, it's not really so much a, a business as it just a uh, <laughs> means to <laughs> pay for travels, pay for gas every day, uh, pay for live music, um, you know, um, pay for camping. I, it's, it blows my mind how expensive tent campsites have gotten traveling across country these days. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's really just a way of subsistence. And, you know, it gives me something to do in my downtime. Um, and what inspired you to start traveling? Uh, man, I, I've been a lifelong deadhead. And, uh, I, you know, I did it briefly, but not to this extent uh, in my, you know, er, late teens, early 20s. Uh, and, you know, I always kind of wondered what it was like to live this type of lifestyle on a full-time basis. And uh, so that kind of what, what just kind of got the wheels thinking in my head about it. And then, um, and then it's turned into this whole other thing. I, you know, uh, COVID kind of changed my world. Uh, I got, I was in the corporate world for like 15 years working for Toyota, um, uh, managing a new car dealership uh, with Toyota uh, in South Carolina. And, um, you know, uh, after I, I moved to North Carolina from South Carolina uh, during that whole process, and um, so it kind of changed my world. And but in looking back on it in a good way, and um, so I just decided to go down different avenues at that point in my life, just because I wasn't happy doing what I was doing. And uh, you know, this it always this uh, being a lifelong deadhead, this type of lifestyle has always intrigued me. And um, you know, just doing and and in my 40s, while I'm young enough to be able to do it, do something I'm passionate about and follow my dreams, and that just really makes me happy every day. Yeah, totally. What are some of the places you have visited so far? Uh, God, since uh, since February this year, um, uh, stayed in Folly Beach for a while. Stayed in uh, James Island, uh, down around Charleston. Uh, went to Savannah, Tybee Island. Uh, then went down the east coast of Florida. Uh, played a, um, uh, I uh, dabble in the music business and just work with just some different musicians, musicians and things like that. And um, brought a musician over from uh, uh, Australia, uh, and her and I toured up and down the East Coast. We played gigs, or I, well, I don't play. Let's make that clear. <laughs> I just know it sounds good and what I like, and like I have a lot of friends that enjoy live music and. Uh, so uh, her and I, we played shows up and down the, uh, I was basically the driver and, you know, <laughs> helping her out with any, anything I could, getting her water when she needed it, stuff like that. And, uh, but uh, we, we uh, went down, we played uh, Wilmington, Oak Island, uh, um, Charleston, uh, played uh, Pon a reggae fest in Ponce Inlet, uh, played F Fort Lauderdale, uh, Hollywood, uh, Miami. And then she got back on the plane and uh, flew back home to uh, Australia. And I had found this hostel um, that uh, was like, when Lucy was over here, we, we had to stay at better places, cause, <laughs> you know, but I'm like, yeah, I, I found this hostel. And so I ended up staying in South Beach for like three extra weeks. And, and then at that point I was like, all right, I'm ready to do this. I think I'm ready to be on the road like full time. And I think uh, like, and so I outfitted my van with solar, um, solar generators and, uh, things like that because I don't I don't want to carry any gas with me I don't want to have to carry like propane tanks and you know all that kind of stuff because I got my dog Stella who is over here just napping and uh, uh, you know and like it's I don't know it's like I want to be green everything I do um, all my products that I have are all vegan and cruelty free they're all organic all natural um, so I, I do have a very uh, conscientious um, mindset about uh, our environment uh, and and what I do and with the, the things that I do to um, like I, I, I want to make sure everything I'm doing to to make it better I even t tell people if they bring back the, the mason jars um, that I'll discount their their next thing because I mean that that costs money you know and I'd much rather reuse them over and over you know than to go out and buy new ones every time you know and um, so same thing with the plastic bottles wash them out bring them back I'll take them home like steam clean them and um, you know, and then I'll, I'll just got you, know, you and it, you basically exchange them, you know, like so. It's not like you have to wait on your your next jar or bottle. You just exchange them at a the time, you know. And um, so, because I encourage that kind of thing, recycling stuff is a big thing to me. And um, you know, like just leaving as little carbon footprint as um, you know is important to me. 
Um, that's why, like, I've been, I've been camping and, like, cooking. Like, um, I don't even go. I just, you know, get whatever wood's available. And, like, that's what I cook with. And, you know, um, right now I'm lucky enough I, um, I did have a health issue um, from camping. Uh, cut on my foot, got infected, and ended up spending three weeks in the hospital. So right now I'm actually staying at a friend of a friend's house um, down in North Harrisburg. So I do have a... Because I needed some, a place to recover a little bit, you know. So after three weeks in the hospital, it really takes it out of you. And, uh, but uh, anyway, um, it, you know, just uh, travel. Um, travel has always inspired me. And in the United States, uh, I, you know, I, I've already traveled the United States several times. Uh, Oklahoma and New Mexico are the only two states I have left to go to. I'm going to make them at some point. <laughs> Uh, I, I, uh, I've taken that n northern route across country several times, but uh, I, you know the southern route. Um, you know, um, I don't know. Eventually, what at some are point. What some um, of the most important or valuable discoveries you've had in this journey? Uh, well, number one is uh, be open to learning uh, about everything and anything, any any town you go to, like um, and and. My grandparents have that have always had that influence on me. Um, you know, their big thing was when we were traveling as like a little kid. Um, they were like, "Don't ever go somewhere when we're traveling that we could go at home." So like they would all like we went to the little mom and pop places. We didn't go to like chain restaurants were never a thing for us. You know, like uh, or or um, any any time we went somewhere like we you know we wanted to learn about the lo local culture and learn like what. You know what was the you know what was the the favorite food there? What was the the town known for? What was you know that that type of thing? And so and it, that's that's one thing I always try and do like because I, I love going into different towns and just kind of like learning about the culture and you know find out where the locals are and what the locals do because like I don't I, I I try to not come off so touristy you know. <laughs> what is um, something about Burlington that makes it different from other places? Uh, man, everybody's just, this is a very independent place, but it's also, um, it's, it seems like a very, uh, I've, I've been here two weeks now, and um, one of the, uh, one of the things that I've noticed, there's a, a wide division in this town between the tourist people, the, um, you know, the, the college area, and then uh, the the homelessness and the the I guess uh, lower end of, of Burlington and it's and they're not they're like a, a block from each other you know it's not like there's a whole big town separating and like there's a big space between it it's like they're all commingled and um, but um, you know I was, I, I, and that's one thing I do want to mention about my travels that I've noticed um, the homeless popula or the homeless like pandemic really in America is like. I mean, it's crazy. Like last, you know, last time I really traveled um, was probably, you know, back in 2010. Um, you know, for several months at a time, and um, the the homeless population now is like, you know, I mean, it's, I mean, it it is way way more, um, and it is uh, uh, way way more drug use and uh, opioids are, are a major major problem. And um, I think that needs to be addressed. I, I know t people keep doing these little little things, and like, I mean, it's a real it's a real problem out. Like, and I mean, I've witnessed it firsthand because like I I do like I, I I go into these places and like because I do I want to learn about it. And you know, like I'm I'm working on a long term project myself, um, which I'm not. Uh, it's but it's a it's a long long term project. But, you know, like I, I go in and try and like insert myself in so, some of these communities and like and just really like learn about it firsthand, like from from their angle. And um, it's not that I think nowadays it's different than what it what it used to be. Um, these people have just kind of given up on life because of like they can't afford to they, they they've been priced out of like these few blocks here in Burlington cost so much to live. And like they've, they've been priced out of like they got nowhere to live. So they're homeless on the streets and they just given up. And so they, they're more worried about going to get their next thing to, uh, to make them feel better because they got no freaking, uh, they're like, they don't know how to make anything better or a solution to anything, you know? And I, and I don't know what the solution is, but uh, I, think, I think it's something that definitely needs to be talked about a lot more.